So good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Wilson, co-chair of the Women of Influence Committee this year. And we're honored to have Teresa Coe with us today, who will give our luncheon keynote address. We invited her to speak because she has been a trailbla trailblazer in Hong Kong over her 25-year career in law, and a woman particularly committed to improving diversity in Hong Kong and beyond. Teresa is currently a partner at Freshfields Law and serves as its China chairman. She founded the firm's renowned equity capital markets practice, helping numerous Chinese and international clients with high-profile and first-of-a-kind securities transactions, including IPOs for big names like ICBC, ABC, China Mobile, CICC, Soho China, Alibaba, IMAX, and L'Occitane. Teresa also has an impressive record in public and private M&A transactions, including HSBC's investment in Bank of Communications and on TPG's disposal of its stake in Shenzhen Development Bank. She was the chairman and deputy chairman of the listing committee of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and now serves as a non-executive director of the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission and a deputy chairman of the SFC's Takeovers and Mergers Panel. Teresa was previously awarded our Women of Influence Professional of the Year in 2013, selected as one of 25 Women of Our Time by the SCMP, and awarded Outstanding Practitioner and Best Capital Markets Lawyer by the Asian Women in Business Law. I will now hand it over to Teresa to speak on the topic, Change is Good. Please join me in welcoming her to the stage. It is my distinct honor to be with so many dynamic, successful, and glamorous women and many good men <laughs> today in this beautiful venue. My sincerest thanks to AmCham for bringing us all together and hosting this important event for the 13th year. Doing this year after year for over a decade is so impressive. Even more impressive is to have come up with this year's theme, leading change transforming ourselves, our organizations, our society. You seem to have covered everything. <laughs> Given the turmoil and change, and I'm sure I'm not alone in saying this, the surprise around us, this theme can't be more relevant. I know some of you are still recovering from the events this week in the United States, and I know I am. Both candidates represented a departure from the norm. In Hillary's case, her agenda, but now we have to wait possibly for some time before we see a female president of the United States. And in Donald Trump's case, well, where do you even start? Rest assured, I'm not going to talk about how, why, what now, what next, or other political turmoil around the world right now, or indeed our own local or not so local politics. That would be too depressing over lunch. But I would say this, being elected president of the United States does not make right, does not excuse him, does not illegitimize all those outrageous things he has said. It cannot, it should not, and it must not. A line I will always remember is, when others go low, we go high. And with an open mind and a big heart, and I think all of us have to, I hope he succeeds in unifying the country as he now says he would. So today, I just want to take you briefly through my own life journey and how I battled through some interesting changes even when I haven't moved firms. The first real change I remember was when I was packed off to boarding school in the UK. By today's standard, my mother was the mildest version of a tiger mum. But she got really fed up with me, mostly for not concentrating. 
and decided I'd be better off being educated by someone else. She settled on nuns. <laughs> Patient enough to pick me up with and occasionally scary enough to keep me in line. I embraced the experience, learned to be quiet, and I thought I worked hard, but probably played much harder. And then, when thinking about life after boarding school, I dropped the idea of a degree in fashion design. My father didn't think it was a serious enough profession. To think I could have been a designer brand, and all of you would be carrying handbags by Teresa Co. <laughs> I embraced the law. Long stints in the library were practically all I could remember while reading law. But I graduated, and I got qualified. And after four years in the city of London, I felt a change within me and wanted to come back to Hong Kong, where I was born. That was 10 years before the handover. Please stop counting years in your head. <laughs> Not knowing many souls in Hong Kong, I joined a tiny fresh fields office with three partners and five lawyers. And the only other Chinese associate left on the day I joined. It couldn't be me. I only just arrived. So when I was, it was put to me that I needed to give a speech in Beijing in Mandarin when I could not really speak Mandarin, so I learned Mandarin. I didn't think it was a real change at the time, but how it has changed my life. The speech on how to do an IPO in Hong Kong was followed by a real-life case tackling the listing of my first Chinese IPO a petrochemical plant outside Shanghai. I had to stand in line every night for the one phone with international dialing access, which was otherwise heavily padlocked in a box in a room in our hotel headquarters. I could tell from the looks of the managers on the ground, who had never seen lawyers march into their offices before, that they knew change was coming to them too. Too often, we talk about our history, our successes and our failures, without reference to those around us. Your efforts only go a long way, but it's only part of the equation. In particular, I'm always grateful for the support I get from my husband and my two children. However, having a family brings all sorts of changes that you are never quite prepared for. What I learn when my children arrive is this. Sometimes, change is forced upon you, even if you are not quite ready for it. Juggling home and work was not without its challenges. Doing two dinners every night, one with my kids at home, and another with the team when I come back to the office afterwards in the run-up to the MTRC IPO. I didn't recall eating anything in either of them. I still remember the day when I could not go on our family skiing holiday and staying behind to negotiate a multi-billion dollar deal with clients in our boardroom, when my five-year-old daughter managed to get through our switchboard. Somehow, she came through on our speakerphone and yelled down at the top of her voice, Mommy, Mommy, you forgot to pack my swimsuit and everyone is going swimming! I thought it was the other law firm coming back with a counteroffer on the final points. And through the years, I swapped my notebook for a BlackBerry, and then for an iPhone, and then for a mini iPad. And now I have a BlackBerry, an iPhone, and an iPad Pro. It can be so hard to keep up with change. Now I'm thinking of an iPhone 7. And after all those years, and many more years than I would care to admit, I am indeed the first China chairman that Freshfields has ever appointed since 1743. Well, we've been around for a long time. And now when I hear the word change, it is so often used in a negative way. I don't know about you, but it, change feels like a reaction now. The environment is changing, so we have to react. The economy is changing, so we have to react. The job market is changing, so we have to it, it react. Enough. We get it. 
So today, I want to make sure we all remember that change isn't just about reacting. Change can be about progress, and we should embrace it. And it is also about thinking forward. The truth is that we do it every day. Our personal circumstances change, our families change, our job changes, or the content of our job changes, and that is a good thing. Some of you may have heard about the sad tale of the first digital camera. Yes. In 1975, and I think most of you were not born in this room. A young engineer named Stephen Sassoon showed the world's first digital camera to his bosses at Kodak. Kodak sat on the product. They didn't want to change their revenue model, which was selling film, for the new toy. In the end, the world passed Kodak by. Other companies chasing the same technology went to market with digital cameras. Kodak enjoyed lucrative patent rights for a limited period, but ultimately filed for bankruptcy five years after those rights expired. Kodak had the inside track on something which changed the world, but they chose to retreat from change. When I look at our equity capital markets in Hong Kong, it has been the envy of many markets over the last 20 years. There have been some amazing success stories, from listing businesses of the husband and wife entrepreneurs in Guangzhou and Hong Kong to the best of the best and the most valuable state-owned enterprises and privately owned enterprises in mainland China. Many of them market leaders in their own sectors. At one time, we also attracted high-profile international brands onto our exchange. But the sort of game-changing listings that Hong Kong enjoyed will be much harder to come by, as the world embraces fintech, biotech, Bitcoin, big data, robotics, artificial intelligence, and next-generation technologies. We must look for ways to attract these companies to our markets. We have to stay connected, and we have to continue to build Hong Kong as a sustainable international financial center. Unless we act now and capture the corporate icons of tomorrow, and unless we rediscover the appetite for innovation and evolution, we risk being pushed aside as not being competitive, or worse, irrelevant. It is far too easy for us to rest on our laurels and become complacent. We must not be deceived by our ranking as the top listing venue in the world in recent years. We should look beneath the top three to five IPOs, which give us the ranking, to see if we have the sort of depth, breadth, and quality of companies we want to attract to help our market grow in profile, quality, and depth of liquidity. Ultimately, we want a diverse market, attracting not only Chinese companies but thriving businesses regionally and globally. And we want a market that is a quality market for institutional as well as retail investors. We also want Hong Kong to play a crucial role as the One Road, One Belt initi initiatives are implemented and create opportunities. A dynamic market requires change. We either create the path for ourselves, or we will lose our relevance. So you may ask, what can we do to change this path? I know all, not all of you are in financial services or are remotely interested in IPOs or our securities market. So as a successful group of women and men, we must recognize the general, generational changes that we have benefited from due to efforts of both men and women. But there is still a lot more each and every one of us can do. No matter what industry, we are still fighting to get to the top of the companies based on our merits. We are still left with unenviable choices between work, family, and marriage. So ask yourself, what can you do to bring about the sort of change you want? 
One of the people I have been most inspired by is Steve Jobs. He told a story about looking himself in the mirror every morning and asking, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? He said, wherever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I need to change something. It's a good test. And it is to change something. It is not to change everything. At this stage of my legal career, I realized I should be doing even more to pass on the lessons I've learned and to nurture future generations. I don't know if I always get, get it right, and I try to remember myself each day is to be more patient, to put others first, and to be a broad shoulder people can lean on. We need to remember that our success and that of our successors is not a zero-sum game. We must support one another. We should all spend more time thinking about the sort of change we want and sharing our wisdom to make sure change happens for the better. Change can be difficult, no doubt. I remember when faxes machines were the leading office technology. That didn't last. But the death of the fax machine and the rise of the email led to the spread of the web, which led to the advent of smartphones, which led to the iPhone, which led to Skype, FaceTime, WeChat videos, which means I can now speak to my daughter, who was spared the nuns, but is currently at university, in real time, face to face. I wonder what's next. Our ability to deal with change is second only to our potential. With that, I ask you to remember that change is great and challenge you to be inspired by change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm sure I'd like to open up the floor for questions. And we have uh, mics roaming around. So just raise your hand if you have a question. And please introduce yourself before uh, your question. Hi, my name is Divya, and um, I've, I've been leading one of the sessions today for Amcham, which has been fantastic. Theresa, my question for you is, I think we can all largely agree that there is not enough women on corporate boards and public committees here in Hong Kong. So for us, what concrete steps would you recommend that we take to get in line, get in shape, and get ready? I'm so glad that you asked that question because at 11.6%, two years on a row is simply terrible and absolutely not good enough. And in the whole of last year, we have only got five additional women and only one from Hong Kong. The whole year, we've only been able to find five additional women who are prepared to step forward and that's definitely not good enough. As you all know, the Women Foundation, the 30% Club, the community in business have all been doing so much to try and raise awareness. And I think there is general awareness. I think one of the things that we could all do is to use our influence. And you may not believe it, but every single person here in this room has influence. You know, if you're a practitioner, if you're a lawyer, if you're a financial advisor, if you're a banker, if you're an accountant, in any walks of life, you could suggest or put yourself forward and raise the awareness to the, the fun, the importance, and the learning that you can get out of putting yourself forward as potential or board members. I think that is something that all of us can do and we don't have to wait for any, every, everyone else. But I think if you are in a corporate position and when there is a vacancy available, don't just reach out to the usual suspects. Yeah. And then if you are able to afford a headhunter or a recruitment agency, ask them to give you alternatives. 
And in fact, for us internally at Freshfields, I mean, you can't actually recruit anyone unless there is diverse diversity. And I think that's very important. And one of the things that we've also been pushing is for the stock exchange to come up with some guidance letter to let new applicants who come to our exchange to pay attention to the need for diversity. And we're not just talking about gender, we're talking about age, experience, expertise, background. And if, if every company that comes to our exchange for one year had at least one woman on, the ex on, on their board, in one year we would have 200 women because we roughly list 100, uh, 200 companies and that would create a pool which would also be useful. And I think the other thing that I've always been saying is it's not just at board level, it's actually even more important at the management level so that you create the pipeline. So this is a responsibility that everyone who works for a company needs to pay attention and I think that is, there are definitely a lot of concrete things that you know, everyone can do to try and make a difference or help you know, this place to make a difference. This is not a setup. Um, hi, Teresa. My name is Rena Harinand, and I work with Ogilvy and Mather. And my question is about how we engage the younger generation. Um, the younger generation in Hong Kong is spending less time in jobs. On average, they're in a job for three years. But they still have significant financial responsibility. On average, they're contributing 19% of their income to their families. So they have a very different outlook than we may do in the room. What advice do you have for that generation about how they can engage and transform themselves? Another fantastic question, one that I've been grappling with, you know, as an employer, because as you know, um, I keep saying that the legal profession is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And there are not enough people who are prepared to even start the marathon. Um, I think increasingly, um, young people of today are looking for meaning in their life purpose. So you have to inspire them and encourage them that, that there, is, there is something in what they do. It is not just the paycheck. And, and I think we have to you know, help to create that connectivity and help to make them feel that there is uh, something beyond just you know, the, the, the piece of work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So things like um, corporate social, social responsibility, uh, responsible business, uh, something which is making a contribution to the community, in my view, has become very, very important. Um, I, you know, I don't have the magic bullet or the sort of, you know, the crystal ball, but that's something that I think actually is important because they want to. And then the other thing is giving them opportunity to learn and emphasizing that everybody develops at different paces and then create the environment whereby people can be assessed depending on their ability and their development. So it does not necessarily have to be that everybody has to, you know, in a legal profession, you know, become something within three years and then become something else. You can, you can, um, take some time out and then come back, you know, the roll on, roll off. Uh, I think that that creates the flexibility. And things like agile working, I think that's also becoming increasingly important. It doesn't mean that they work less hard, but that means that they're more in control of their time. It is not something which is obviously easy for every professional, every business, but increasingly that's what they're looking for, in my view. Hi, Jennifer Parks, White and Case. Um, Teresa, I, have, I have actually have the same question, but I was wondering if you can take it from a more personal level. Did you, you know, come back to Hong Kong, join Freshfields, and know that you wanted to be a lead partner at Freshfields? Like, it did, or how did, how did your journey go? Um, I, in fact, in, a, in, 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 in some ways, the, one of the reasons why I, I am a, a firm believer in people develop at different paces because I was a completely hopeless kid. Uh, I, think, I think my best mark for Chinese dictation was minus 46. 
because you deduct two marks for every word that you get wrong, and then they keep going after it's gone down to zero. So, um, uh, honestly, I think that people, I, I, I have to say, you know, I went, you, you all heard me say, I went in the law, not be believe that I was passionate about it. I knew that that would be one subject that my, my father wouldn't disagree too much with. So I came back to Hong Kong and I, I joined you know, a firm that nobody heard of. In fact, all my aunties and uncles were saying that you're joining what? Fresh fields? You know, and, uh, and then I think it is opportunities in front of you. I don't think I actually aspire to be China chairman at all. In fact, I just sort of head down, did one deal at a time, did the best I could. And, you know, I felt that if you really concentrate hard enough, you get a lot of satisfaction because you can make things happen. And I would always never take no as an answer. So you push the envelopes, you, and I think being at the right place at the right time helps. But at the same time, you create your own luck. And so I, I, I guess you just carry on and there are more things that are opened up to you and you think that would be the right thing. In fact, after I've done my first IPO, I used to do aircraft financing. So again, the IPO was simply because there was no Mandarin speaking. In fact, I didn't even speak Mandarin. No Chinese person in the office and you just have to step forward. And I knew that having protested for a while that it wasn't going to go down because if you look around, there were no other lawyers who could even be attempting to do something as kind of strange as that at the time. So I stepped forward. And after the completion of the first IPO, I said to myself, doing one is like an accident. And it was a bit of an accident. But if you do two, you build a track record. So I did say to my senior partner then, you know, um, perhaps we should get the second one and then you could build something. And then he said to me, I can still remember to this day, he said, you go and get the second one and then we will help you. So I had to go and get the second one, which, uh, you know, again, by some good fortune I managed to do. And then the rest is history. I don't know whether that answers your question. We'll take one more. Thank you, Teresa. A really powerful speech and a very powerful presence, so thank you for that. I wanted to ask you, in the context of such a phenomenal career, what would you say was your personality quality that helped you to transform? And at the same time, what was the biggest challenge that you faced in that transformation? Wow. Um, I think persistence, uh, don't give up. Uh, be an optimist, I think, um, and, and being curious. And I think increasingly, we've got to be curious. If you stop learning, there's not much else to do. So I think, I think, uh, and um, I think challenges, you know, I will admit it. I think I have been lucky. Um, work-life balance is, is, a, is a daily challenge. Um, but you need to set yourself up with the support. So, and, and I did say, you know, I have a lot of domestic support. You know, you have a husband who is understanding and, and kids who have grown up with this Blackberry. So put it away as much as you can. Now it's iPhone, same thing. Um, so... Uh, and, and you need to have the right nurturing environment because if everyone around you is negative energy and keeps saying that your job sucks and you're never going to be able to actually kind of like have the grounding from which to build yourself. So I think finding the right place is also important. Well, please join me in thanking Teresa for sharing herself today. Thank you. Yeah. It's a little champagne.